just push the button so we're all set. Good. Well, let's go ahead and get going. I know time is tight for some of us. We had a couple others that might show up. But I want to introduce you to Tom. I met Tom at City Advance in Fresno. And then here we got a, another last minute one. But you're going to do it visually now. OK, cool. Yeah, I was on my cell phone first. But then I, I you're going to mess, uh... mess Tom up because he knows your name. And he, now he sees your face. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> well, you see my Maui hat, too. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, man. You're we, right. You got a Maui hat. I have family. Cool. Yeah. yeah, I have family from Maui. We just saw whales out there, too. So yeah, my cool. son's going to move out there for a year or two. Cool, cool. So the, the reason for this call is to introduce you to Tom. I met Tom in Fresno at the City Advanced. Uh, and as Taj know, I went as an apostolic scout to check these guys out. And <laughs> everything that I saw, we I just resonated in my heart. Yeah. And along with us in Santa Cruz that we've said that everything is bathed in prayer before we do anything. And Tom is from Frontline Ministries and he's done multiple uh, prayer summits in different uh, mm. cities and regions. So I mm. thought I would introduce him to you all and ask some questions. I sent him an email last night a little bit about our background of who we are, who Convergence is, some of the backgrounds like Trudy being in IHOP and we all have a heart for prayer ministries and intercession. So just wanted to bring Tom and introduce him and say, uh, give us a little bit of vision, what you do, what you, what you bring to the table. I've, I've shared with a few of the people, the, the Whatcom uh, County in Washington story. So we're looking for kind of yeah. resources to kind of light the fire and, and where to go from there. And before we go, everyone that's on the phone, just uh, say who you are so we know who's, who, who made it on the call. The 6146, the last four, who is that? You must be. Uh, Lori just joined. Hi, Lori. Uh, Welcome. Hey, Lori. Lori's another one of our big intercessors, and she's in the South County. Okay. She comes up here and, and ministers at the Convergence up here. And then the, the what is it? The, Nine three eight two. Who is that again? Is that Trudy? That that one's me. That's okay. Lori. Nine three eight two. All right. So, Tom, we've kind of done a, a soft introduction, mm -hmm. but uh, sure. kind of jump in there and give us some vision here. Great. And Ron, I'm good up until top of the hour. If everyone else is, but I'll I'll share a little bit. Um, just kind of who I am, what I'm up to, and some vision and how I you know might or might not connect with Santa Cruz in any way. And then I'll just leave this open for some just open engagement. Yeah, Trudy, I've had many a deep conversation with Mike Bickle and some of his team folks in, in IHOP. I did work in Kansas City for about five or six years with the movement on the ground and not with IHOP directly, but with Gary Schmitz, a lifelong friend of uh, Mike. So just a little, little bit of ba background. Um, I was the executive pastor in a large church here in Corvallis um, in Oregon. So, uh, so, so, Taj, I'm really feeling more comfortable already that Ron tells me that Santa Cruz is weirder than Portland. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're Salinas people, Lori and I, so we're the normal people down here. <laughs> yeah, all right. That's yeah. Good. That's good. Yeah, you, you keep everybody else normal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, no, I, I grew up in New York State and uh, married my wife, yeah. Jerry, from San Diego. So, I spent a lot of time in California, uh, especially Southern California. And um, so I was the executive pastor here in a large church in Corvallis, 79 to 83. And before I became a believer in the Jesus movement in 1969, uh, I was a very disillusioning experience with organized church. And so I became a classic 60s religious seeker. And so I, I checked out just about everything under the sun and everything from astrology to Zen and most everything in between. So I'd be right at home and comfortable in Santa Cruz or Taos, New Mexico, you know, a lot of these places where there's just a lot of metaphysical uh, stuff. And I studied it very deeply. I'm not boasting here, but I was a practicing astrologer for a period of time, you know, a spiritism and all this kind of stuff. And then radically saved, um, met Jesus in 1969. And so because of all that, you know, when I was in seminary, Asbury Seminary in Kentucky, I did my master's thesis 
on Paul's understanding of principalities and powers, because I had experienced it. I had encountered Darth Vader's of the spirit world, uh, mm -hmm. high level forces of evil and powers of deception. And so I did a quite an extensive master's thesis on that topic, which uh, in 1989, Peter Wagner discovered. So Peter Wagner did a literary search uh, in the world and, and called me up one day and said, look, I think you know more about this topic than anybody alive. And so, uh, so that then led me, when I left the staff of the church here in 83, uh, I did spiritual warfare ministry for seven years, mostly one-on-one -on -one deliverance work, emotional healing, uh, I was discovered by missionary organizations, so I began traveling overseas a lot and um, getting more into the area of how the powers of darkness um, assault missionary organizations and missionary endeavors. And so I kind of really was counseling high-level leaders of mission organizations. So by mid-80s, I'm traveling a lot worldwide and, uh, and doing teaching. So by 89, um, I decided to put my book in print. Somebody called me up, a publisher. And so that then led to putting kind of my, the content of my thesis into print in a book called The Believer's Guide to Spiritual Warfare, which I believe Ron picked up. It's been in print 30 years. So one of the things I do is one of the things is to bring uh, instruction, teaching on, on, on biblical uh, balanced spiritual warfare. And not just for individuals, but in more in the category of uh, how p the powers of darkness impact a city or a region. So by 89, um, I was asking the Lord a question, and I started getting very much interested in cities and city movements. I began doing some leadership here in Corvallis, my own city in 81. So I'm one of the earlier practitioners of, uh, of, of what it takes to build a city movement of unity and prayer and collaboration. The only one I know who's been at this longer than me is Ian Shelton in Toowoomba, Australia. Ian started in 74. And so by 89, I kind of have this dialogue with the Lord going, Lord, I understand your authority, your power, the power of your word to set captives free. I'd seen a ton of deliverance. I'd seen a lot of healing. Um, and so my question was, do you set cities free? Mm -hmm. uh, how, how might you move by your power and your authority to set a city free from a predominant power of darkness or deception or pornography or materialism, you know, wh whatever it may be. And so, um, so at the same time, I discovered Ed Savoso. I'm sure probably, you know, Ed, Ed well in the city yeah. and heard about the move, move of God in Argentina. So I think I did three, maybe four trips uh, to Argentina, Buenos Aires, Resistencia. I wanted to go see it. Um, and I kind of heard about it and uh, it developed kind of a collegial relationship with Ed Peter Wagner brought me into that. So I was by this point traveling with Ed, with Sidney Jacobs, Chuck Pierce. I was kind of in the, the spiritual warfare jet set of the early 90s. And, and then something happened that was really quite dramatic. I was in many meetings worldwide. And you folks would know what this is, where people are shouting at the devil. And a lot of, a lot of energy, a lot of volume to try to get darkness out of a place. And uh, after about a year and a half of this, I just said, nothing's moving. And there's a kickback going on. There's a counterattack. People are getting beat up. They're getting discouraged, disillusioned. So I, I, I ran all these experiences back through my theological grid, Old Testament, New Testament, and came up with what I, at that point, called a balanced, corrective perspective on engaging high-level darkness. So I, I today call it protocols, protocols for dealing with uh, systemic evil. Now, so at the same time, I'm asking these questions and kind of reforming my whole way of thinking about cities. Uh, I heard about a movement uh, that began in Portland, uh, Joe Aldrich. It actually began in Salem, Oregon, just not far from me here, uh, called Pastors Prayer Summit. And so I called up Joe. I knew him and I said, man, can I experience this? I'm kind of intrigued by it. So he invited me to Seattle. So January 91, uh, I'm sitting with about 80 leaders, all men, who are repenting of pride, competition, judgment, theological, you know, one-upmanship, mm -hmm. and getting their hearts right with one another. And so something dramatic happened to me. It was probably the biggest point of change in my life. I, I went home to my wife, Terry. She was never thrilled being married to a modern-day exorcist. It was, it was not the right <laughs> 
I, I remember this is January 91. I come home and, and sit her down on the couch. I said, good news. You've just been delivered from deliverance ministry. And we're giving the rest of our lives to promoting Jesus prayer in John 17 for oneness and health in his body. That those who follow him would be knit together in love. And so that's really who we are. That's who we've been since February 91. I started a summit here in my own city in Corvallis. We've now done them every year for 30 years. We go to Cannon Beach. And uh, so now it's men and women. You know, typically in any given summit in early February, it's about 100, 110 men and women, not just from Corvallis, but from our valley. We have a valley movement. Uh, Eugene Springfield, Ron was privileged to meet Stephen Patty Buss from Eugene. A uh, powerful movement of unity and prayer. They've got a citywide prayer strategy, one church, one day you know, 24 seven prayer. And so we're, we've really got a kind of a, a valley wide movement that's about 30 years old. Um, so that became my home base. And I began doing prayer summits all across the US, Canada. Um, eventually, I was the one that pioneered them overseas. I was the first one to take it to Japan, and then to Australia and Europe. And uh, so a long story, 30 years, that was about 30 years ago, um, I've led now over 900 um, gatherings like this. It's Psalm 133, not a conference. I don't teach. Um, you know, it's not an instruction thing, but it's a meeting with God. And um, yeah, over 900 of these in many, many different cultures. So my main investment since 2003 has been South Asia. And I've done multiple prayer summits like this in probably 50 to 60 cities. I've trained others. Uh, Bill Berry was there with me in Fresno, and, and Bill is doing these now all over South Asia himself. And um, so what, what that does is if the walls come down, when you're together, when you're together together, and that's actually right. an interpretation of the Hebrew, Psalm 133, you know, when you're, when you're together together, God pours out blessing, favor. And so when you do a meeting like this, the Lord shows up. Is His presence is just so compelling anyone who's there in that in that room says well god came to our meeting and so that then use usually leads to a pattern of some regular prayer for leaders in the city for us it's weekly we we pray every thursday at 11 o'clock uh, in an intercessory posture for our city but so so that's one thing that the lord does in me and through me and that'll continue probably until i pass it's just it's a part of my calling part of my dna the second right. thing it, it's kind of a real specialty is I put leadership teams in place. It's, it's, I use the word apostolic. It's very apostolic. Yeah. It's just, it's a call of God. Nobody, you can't just do this. <clears throat> but mi most of the places where I've gone, I will see in the spirit, the individuals that the Lord is kind of selecting or calling out mm -hmm. and to actually serve. And this is men and women who will steward a sustainable movement. So, so my middle name is sustainable. I don't do one-off meetings. <laughs> uh, you know, if, if Terry were on this, he'd say, man, my, my husband keeps showing up. And so what happens usually is the walls come down in the summit and there's deep covenantal love. Um, and it's, it goes cross-cultural. It's African-American, Latino, Anglo, Asian, doesn't matter. You know, the, the ground is level at the foot of the cross. And so there's this deep relational covenantal bonding. And people say, wow, this is who we are now. Patterson, New Jersey, a year ago, a Latino brother at the end of one of these times said, well, we are now a family of families. Mm -hmm. Jesus has knit our hearts together. We're a family of families. And so then what, what comes out of that is enough trust to put leadership in place. You know, men and women who will own this and who will say, okay, Lord, we're going to seek you to really understand your will in terms of what you want to do in our city. And so, you know, I'm just saying here, I've had a high degree of success all over the world when there's that kind of trust that comes out of a prayer summit gathering. And then you put a team together and you get the right leader of that team that really knows how to lead by consensus, um, lead by modeling, uh, not top down, but it's from the ground up, you know, where we get the mind of yes. work together, <clears throat> we discern what he wants us to do. And a leader just kind of submits that to a group and then gains consensus and you move forward. So we've got cities all over the place that are moving in that model um, successfully and then di discovering how the Holy Spirit's leading them 
to bring impact mm -hmm. to the to the city. You know, some of the language I use is it's doing good deeds and sharing the good news. And um, so, you know, we're seeing that here. Um, I'm, I'm currently working extensively in Patterson, New Jersey, and it's been described as one of the 10 most difficult urban environments in the country. And mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit is doing miraculous things, you know, to bring um, harmony and collaboration between strong, I, I have to say jaded African-American, mm -hmm. you know, strong, wonderful men and women, but jaded, because, you know, the, the race thing just then never really does work. And so, you know, between African-Americans, strong Latinos, you know, Anglos, um, and men and women, old and young, multi-generational. Mm -hmm. So these leadership groups in a city are multi-generational, mixed gender, multi-racial. And it's men and women that say, Lord, we've heard you. We understand how you want to build the kingdom in our city. And we're going to walk this out. We're going to steward this going forward. So just to recap, I, I, I facilitate these gatherings called prayer summits. Um, the Lord uses me often to help put a leadership group in place. Um, and then thirdly, I do what's called a vision cast, a city gospel movement vision cast. It's one of the more fun things that I do. And that's coming into a city. Um, and it could be two hours. It could be a half day. It could be a long lunch. It could be an hour and a half lunch, whatever the format is. I'll, I'll share who I am, my journey. I'll tell some stories of other cities that have kind of been on the journey. Some slides. I've got some excellent slides that communicate. I've got some of the best quality video pieces uh, from different places in the world. You know, little clips that just say, wow, here's how the Holy Spirit's working in the UK, you know, or in India or Indonesia. And, and so... I pretty much, you know, cast a vision for uh, for what a city gospel movement could look like. That's our current language. And I've been through all the language changes. So also with city reaching, uh, George Otis, I was very close with George, traveled with him a lot, uh, was in his world. His, his language was transformations. I'm sure you know that some of that's history. And now we've shifted to Tim Keller, and his language is city gospel movements. And you build a kingdom ecosystem in your city. And that ecosystem is a symbiotic relationship between congregations, organizations, and marketplace. Okay, those kind of three. Well, it's actually four. Um, it's building, I, this is kind of my, my understanding, it, it's building a kingdom ecosystem in a city where there is trust and collaboration between pastors, leaders of nonprofit organizations, your marketplace people, which Taj, you'd be in, in that category, marketplace person, and four, right. the prayer and prophetic. And so Lori being in the mix this morning, I mean, she's that kingdom. So I, I call it four kind of kingdom subcultures in the city. And how do those people not just get along, but how do those people actually build a level of trust and bring their DNA alongside one another to do something beautiful, to actually be the mm -hmm. royal priesthood and to release and to release the power of Jesus' life and his sacrificial atonement into a city. And so I love Keller's language because you know, he, he talks about this, this symbiotic relationship. We all kind of draw from one another out of those four different leadership categories and we build something. And, and then you begin to see uh, increase of salvation, increase of evidence of the kingdom. So yeah, in, in a vision cast, uh, it could be anywhere again from an hour and a half to a half day. Um, it's going to put it out there. Here's what I see the Holy Spirit doing worldwide. So then I, I'm, on the, I'm on the leading edge of this globally. Um, I've, uh, I've kind of associated with Movement Day out of New York City, uh, movement.org with Mac Peer, Tim Keller, others. And so I, ha I have a very positive partnering relationship with movement.org, uh, that expression, and then with Palau, with uh, Luis Palau Association with Kevin because they've invested a lot in city movements. And so I've, I'm kind of this you know, neutral person, um, but involved kind of on the global edge of this um, in terms of how this is looking in Indonesia, in South Asia, in Africa. I've done prayer summits like this now in Africa, uh, all through Australia, and still get actually a number of requests from the U.S. So, um, so th this is pretty much who I am and what I'm up to. And then just the last thing on occasion um, in a city like Santa Cruz, 
or a county like Santa Cruz, uh, I might come in and do like a half day or full day workshop teaching on the protocols of high level warfare. So it's not a deliverance ministry thing. It's not like let's come in and, you know, talk about how to cast out demons. No, it's how do you biblically deal with the Darth Vader's that are hanging over your city in your region? That's a pretty intense question. And so I, I anchor my answer to that question in the whole, in the book of Ephesians mostly. And so I've developed a, a, a working kind of practical theology of how a united praying body of Jesus um, can actually engage the powers of evil and see darkness decrease and the kingdom of God increase. And so there, there will be times where I'm invited in, like in, in Tucson, Arizona, I'll probably go last few days of April, and they've identified 22 stronghold issues. Quite a, quite a well-led movement. They've got quite a large budget. They've got like 12 people on staff. It's called Four Tucson. And so they've, they've decided their, their, their key main stronghold is poverty. And they say, we've tried everything. We've tried the programs, the money. We've, we've, we've tried everything. We believe this is a systemic stronghold. And so they're inviting me to come in with a group of about 20 individuals to kind of lead a different kind of a summit. It'd be more like a spiritual warfare summit where we wait on the Lord, we get his mind, and then we go into some deep prayer. And so, you know, so sometimes the Lord will use my understanding of this whole thing of darkness to come in and, and, and provide leadership in a city, some instruction on how to do this. You know, how do we engage the Darth Vader of uh, weirdness over Santa Cruz? <laughs> <laughs> or occultism or witchcraft that goes on up in the hills, you know, Santa Cruz Hills and Los Gatos and up in there. Yep. Yep. Um, Cause I've been in that region. I've done a number of meetings in Mount Hermon, Redwood Christian camp. Uh, I've done prayer summits for Modesto, Fresno up in that region. So, um, and I've, I've been in places of, I would say high level darkness, you know, Jerusalem, Calcutta, St. Petersburg, Russia, uh, Washington, mm -hmm. D.C., the District of Chaos. Um, and so that, that would be one final thing, you know, that I sometimes get involved in. So any, any um, questions or any, any clarifications? Let me open it up for a little bit. I don't want this to be a total monologue. 